Hey everyone, it's Neil Patel again, and today we're gonna to be going over on-page and technical SEO. So I hope you guys are really excited because if you don't make the right changes and adapt your site to Google, from a code perspective, you're not gonna rank well, and that's what I'm gonna teach you today throughout this lesson. We're already in week two, and as I mentioned, we're gonna be going over on-page and technical SEO. I'm really excited for week three because that's where we get into one of my favorite parts, which is content marketing. But for now, let's go over the technical SEO. Everyone knows that linkable content wins, right? The more people that link to you, the easier it is for Google to find your site and the higher that you're gonna end up ranking. And there's many types of links. That's links other sites linking to you, as well as other pages within your site linking to other pages within your site as well. When you're going through your site and you're optimizing for Google, there's many factors that you need to look out for. But before I go into each of those factors, let me first show you how Google sees your website. I want you to go to browse SEO and put in your URL. This will show you how Google views your website. What you'll see is all this code and text that's how Google looks at your website. They don't look at your website in a pretty user interface or a pretty design. They don't see any of that. What you're seeing on the screen is roughly how they view your own website. Now that you know how Google views your website, let's go into the 10 main elements when it comes to on-page SEO. The first one is titles. You know, whenever you do a Google search, you'll see this purple or bluish text at the top, then a green URL, and then black text underneath. The text at the top is titles. That's your title tag. The middle one, the green, is your URL. Of course, that's the URL of your website or your web page. And below that is a description. That's called a meta description. The title tag impacts clicks. If everyone does a search on Google and clicks on the second listing instead of the first listing because the text in the title is more appealing, what do you think that tells Google? It tells Google, hey, Everyone finds a second listing more relevant, so let's move it to number one, and let's move the original one that was ranking at the top back down to number two. So you wanna make your title super appealing. And an easy way to do this is you put your keyword close to the front because someone's typically searching for a keyword when they're on Google, and then you add a modifier towards the end. A modifier is words like buy, guide, review, online, offers, cheap. Sometimes you can even include the year updated in and then you would add the year and we found that when you add the year especially for detailed guides it drastically increases the click-through rate the second element that you need to look at is headlines david ogilvy always said that 80 cents of advertising campaign out of a dollar is spent in the headline and it's true headlines are super important a quick stat for you Eight out of 10 people will read your headline, but only two out of 10 people will click through and read the rest of your copy. So if your headline is not good, you're gonna lose them and you're gonna miss the main opportunity to get people to your page and read the rest of your copy. With the headline, here's some formulas, right? Use a number or a trigger word at the beginning, then an adjective, then a keyword, and then a promise. Remember, your headline is different than the title tag. This is typically the wording or the phrase or the sentence, title, whatever you want to end up calling it, that you use at the top of an article or at the top of a page. The title tag is what you show to someone who's searching Google, and that's what we discuss in the first point. But a headline is what's seen on your own website in the top of the page. People read it, they'll either bounce away or they'll scroll down and they'll read the rest of your copy. An example of someone not using my headline formula is, let's say, how to sell your house. Not that attractive, not that appealing. After using my formula, you can end up using things like how you can effortlessly sell your home in less than 24 hours. People are like, oh, cool, that's great. I wanna get rid of my home. I don't wanna put in that much effort and I wanna get rid of it as quick as possible. You don't wanna be deceptive with your headline. I'm giving you extreme case here. Let's say you're in the home selling business and you know that you can't help people sell their home in 24 hours. Don't put 24 hours in there. Maybe you can do it within 30 days. That's still a good promise that'll cause a lot of people to click through. Some quick tips, short and sweet. Headlines at around six words tend to do better. Use numbers in there. People love numbers. Just imagine yourself 
going through the grocery store in the checkout aisle, you see all these magazines. A lot of them have numbers there on the cover. It's because they know numbers work. Use interesting adjectives. Try negative words like no, without, or stop. Also make sure your headline matches the content. If it doesn't, you're gonna lose trust with your readers or your website visitors. When it comes to headlines, you also wanna make sure that you're getting a ton of shares on social sites like Facebook or Twitter or even LinkedIn. And here's some interesting stats for you. Is when you're looking at two word phrases, the word how to generates more shares than any other two word phrase that we're seeing according to BuzzSumo. And when you're starting your headline, when it means starting the words at the very beginning of the headline, X ways to tends to do the best. The number or the word X, or technically the letter X, would be replaced with a number such as 5, 10, 15, 20. And when you're thinking, hey, what number should I put in there for X ways? Well, first off, however many ways you have, that would be a way to start. And another thing to look at is the total number of shares. When it comes to numbers, the word five, the number 10 also do really well. And you can see that on the left graph when it comes to social sharing. And when it comes to the length of your headline, think about headlines that are roughly around six, seven, eight words, 10 words long. They do fine. If you go too long, you're gonna get very little shares. And if you don't have enough words, you're not gonna get that many shares either. If you wanna get the most amount of shares with your website and your blog posts or your resource pages, make sure you're using plugins like Social Pug or Super Socializer. It's a great way to add the social sharing icons to your site like I have on the Neil Patel website, and it does help generate a little bit more social shares. It doesn't give you a ton more, but every little bit adds up. The next thing I want you to look at is the first 100 words on your webpage. Your first 100 words is what Google's crawling and they're like, hey, if these are your first words, typically what you talk about in your first paragraph or two, which is where your first 100 words usually are, is gonna be what the article is about. You wouldn't end up having your first two paragraphs have nothing to do with what your webpage or article is about. That's why they're looking at your first 100 words really heavily. And you wanna make sure you're dropping in your keywords within there. And you shouldn't have to manually force them in or stuff them. It should appear naturally. And of course, you wanna put ones that are more popular than ones that are least popular. And you can use Uber Suggest. It'll show you what keywords are more popular than others. Next, it's time to make sure that your pages are all interlinked together. So this is a cool graphic from Google, and they show you how they're crawling the web. When you're taking your pages and you're linking page to page to page, it allows their crawler, their algorithm, to continually crawl your website and index every piece of content if they see fit. The reason I say if they see fit is if they don't feel the page is that valuable, they may choose not to index it, or if they feel that the page is, doesn't have uh, unique content, they may choose not to index it. And we'll get into all those things later on, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview. And internal linking is super important. I rank very highly on Google for a lot of my head terms because I'm interlinking throughout my site. Another site that does this is Wikipedia. They rank for almost everything on Google because they're interlinking everywhere. And you can see it whenever you read a piece of content, you'll see those blue links throughout their text because that's the power of internal linking. It's what allows Wikipedia to continually rank higher and higher. And here's a cool graphic from Brahma Media. It shows you that as you link from your homepage to other internal pages, you can have your link juice flow throughout your site. Typically, not always, but typically your homepage has the most authority because a lot of people are linking to your homepage. And then as you link to other pages on your site and you cross link those other pages and those articles to other important pages, what you'll find is it can bring up the rankings of your whole site overall. When you're doing your internal linking, make sure you put in keywords within the link. So for example, here you're seeing keyword stuffing anchor text. That would be the text of the link. You know, I'm showing you the code. Uh, and the reason I'm showing you keyword stuffing anchor text is because although I want you to put keywords within the link, 
and that ends up helping you rank higher for that term, whatever it may be like keyword stuffing anchor text. It'll help you rank higher, but you need to be careful and not just stuff in keywords because if it's unnatural, it's not a good user experience. It's not just about adding in links and keywords. It's about doing what's also best for the user. You're not just optimizing for Google. You're also optimizing for users as well. Typically what I see is if you have a 1,500 word article, you want to aim for at least three to four internal links. A lot of these links may be backing up your claims or linking to other relevant articles. And if you don't have three or four, that's fine. Don't just shove them for the sake of shoving them. Do what's natural and best for the user. Next, external links. This is you linking to other websites and also other websites linking to you. A lot of times you may be, hey Neil, there's my competitor, they have some great data, but I don't wanna to link to my competitor. It's okay, there's nothing wrong with linking to your competitor. I do it all the time because if my competitor has some amazing stats and data, yes, I'm plugging them, but it provides credibility as well and it shows that I'm an authoritative figure because I'm not just making up stats and data or making up information. I'm telling you what to do backed by real data. So that's why external linking is really important. It also tells Google, hey, you are similar to these other websites. And if some of them link back to you or other websites in the same neighborhood link back to you, when I mean neighborhood, also if other marketing sites link back to me, it tells Google, I'm a marketing site and I should be ranked for marketing related keywords. If I had a pet website and other dog sites link back to me, it would tell Google, hey, this site's related to pets or dogs and you should consider ranking them higher for dog or pet related terms. Make sure when you link to the sites, you're linking to trustworthy sites that are reputable. Don't just link to Joe the plumber because you like their design. Make sure their data, their facts are relevant and accurate because you don't want to deceive your own users because it'll reduce how much people believe in you and affect your trust. Now with your website, you also have a lot of pages. Your pages all have unique URLs. URL length is really important. And here's a cool graph by Brian Dean from Backlinko. When your URL length is around 50 characters, you'll tend to rank better than if it is 60 characters or 70 or 80. So try to keep your URL short and to the point, keep them clean. You don't want all these crazy words or characters in there. Like the example I sh am showing you on the screen with like question mark and equal signs. You wanna keep it clean to the point, use letters, use numbers. This is really important in URLs because the more messy it is, what you'll find is the lower you'll rank. And a lot of people are like, no, I want my URL to be really long so I can put in all my keywords. Well, Google will think that your URL is only related to someone who searches for all that keywords, plus you'll rank for the long tail phrases as well. Long tail phrases, just as a quick recap if you're not familiar with that, is when people are doing a Google search for three, four, five word phrases on Google. With your URL structure, make sure you don't include dates. I removed dates from my URL structure on neilpatel.com. By doing this, I boosted my SEO traffic by 50% in roughly 30 days. I kid you not. And here's an example of on a screen, quicksprout.com slash, you know, a date 2019, a month, you know, 07, a day slash 24, and then the title of the article. By removing the date, Google will be like, oh, cool. This article is still relevant because 2019 happened a long time ago, right? We're way past 2019. But the article on how to sur how surveys can hook more customers, that's still relevant in future years. But when you have a date in your article, Google will be like, it's not 2019 anymore, so we shouldn't rank this article as highly. But when you remove the dates, it tells Google, hey, this isn't a news-related article. It's not relevant to a specific time period. It's still relevant in the future. So make sure you don't have dates in your URL. And if you have dates in your URL, you can't just remove them. You got to remove them and 301 redirect your old URLs, the ones with the dates, to the new ones. And I'll go over that in the upcoming lessons. You'll also want to make sure that you're using an SSL certificate. 
Most of web pages that rank on Google use a SSL certificate. This makes your URL instead of HTTP, it adds the S at the end. So then you'll be HTTPS. You know, when you go to a website and it says not secure, usually it's because you're not using an SSL certificate. So you want to make sure that you're using an SSL certificate, not only because it helps with rankings, but it also helps with conversions. Some general URL tips, use hyphens, not underscores, use lowercase text, use characters that are safe. So no and signs, no pound signs, no squiggly marks or anything that isn't letters, numbers, or dashes to keep things simple. And try to keep your URLs at a max of two folders. Because whenever someone does a search, it may be yourdomain.com slash a word slash and then another word or two words. The slashes are folders. So you don't want ideally more than two slashes. Sometimes you'll have more, but try to keep it in that realm. Next tip I want to go over next factor is readability. Look, if people are on your site, they're there to read and then figure out if they want to buy or consume information. But if your text isn't readable, people aren't going to stick around. I like doing things like keeping my words on my page really simple and easy to understand. I'm not trying to impress someone who went to Harvard. I don't have amazing grammar or spelling skills. Keep it simple. Don't talk above people's head. Use short sentences. That way it's easier to skim. I try to keep my sentences or paragraphs at a max of three to four lines. Sometimes if I have more desktop readers, you can do five to six, but a lot of people are on mobile devices these days, as I showed in previous lessons. You also want to use subheadings. You want to use images, quotes, lists, and call to actions. And now I'm going to dive into each of them a little bit more. So when it comes to images, you want to create images or use images sites where you can get images like pexels.com for free. You want to try to create your own images when possible. People like custom made images. Um, make sure that they're compressed in size. They're small. You don't want them blurry, but there's a lot of tools out there. If you just Google compress your image, they'll compress them and keep the quality similar. So that way they load faster for people. And you also want to consider the dimensions for social channels as well. If you don't consider the dimensions, then what will happen is people won't be able to easily share them on Facebook or LinkedIn. And you want to avoid stock photography when possible. Yes, there are sites like Pexels for free that you can use as last resort, but they tend not to do as well as custom images. With your images, you also have to keep in mind that Google can't see them, right? Remember how I showed you how Google looks at a page when you go to browse SEO? So you want to use an alt tag to describe what your image is. And you can see here that little code snippet, image source neilpatel.jpg. I'm saying this image, I'm defining the name as Neil Patel because that's me. And I'm also saying my description would be, let's say, Neil Patel, assuming I'm trying to rank for my name. And my title, a tooltip when someone hovers over the image, I would also use the same typically as my alt tag, which would be, again, Neil Patel. And you're probably wondering, why do I need to do all of this? Well, one, it helps Google, but on top of that, it helps people with uh, disabilities because they use programs to help them describe a website. And of course, if Google's going to rank a website, why not rank a website that's great for all people, even ones who are disabled? Because there's so many people out there who have disabilities. So please do try to make your website compatible for them as well. When you're looking at image sourcing, some sites to also check out is Envato or Graphic River. Those are two awesome sites as well. Now subheadings. Think of your title, your heading on the page as a H1, but then you have subheadings, right? You have the title of your book. That's like the title of your article, but then there's also chapters in a book, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. Those are what is considered subheadings. And typically your subheadings are using H2 heading tags or H3 heading tags. And if you're not sure if you're using them right, you can go to Uber suggest, type in your URL, and then on the left navigation, click on site audit and it'll analyze your headings and all your code for you and tell you what's wrong there as well. With your web pages, call to actions are really important when it comes to readability. If your call to actions don't stand out in color and they're not clear, you won't do well. Make sure when you're picking the color, do not use red. Red is typically a color for like stop, like a stop sign or a stop light. So you wanna avoid red, but you can use any other color. Just make sure it stands out and there's a good 
uh, difference between the color on your page. So for example, if my page has a ton of blue, I may use green instead, or I may use orange, or I may use, I don't know, purple or pink or, you know, pick any or yellow. I don't know what goes with blue, but you get the point I'm trying to make. You wouldn't want to use the same exact color. Also, another thing I do throughout my blog post is I use a lot of quotes and bullet points. It makes things so much easier to read and skim. Keep in mind, not everyone's going to read your content. A lot of people are skimming it. So using quotes and using bullet points, it makes things so much easier to skim. It's also why I love creating infographics. They're like a visual piece of content that shows people information and images, and it makes it easier to understand and skim. And these days, everyone is watching videos. YouTube is one of the most popular websites. It makes up a decent chunk of Google's market cap. So make sure you're including videos when it's relevant. And videos is also a great thing for you to leverage, and I'll probably create another course on this in the future, is uh, YouTube SEO, right? You can get a ton of traffic from videos as well because YouTube is the second most popular search engine. Another factor to look at is related keywords. Google knows that when you do a search for Windows, you're not just looking at Windows the operating system like Windows 10, you may be looking at older versions like XP or 8 or 7. And you can see at the bottom of Google, whenever you do a search, it'll show you other related searches. This is their own lane semantic indexing. And you can also use Uber suggests when you go to the keyword ideas report on the left side and you put in any keyword that you're trying to rank for, it'll show you all the other related keywords that Google looks at. And you want to try to integrate some of these keywords within your page as well. Cause if you want to rank for the main keyword, might as well rank for all the relevant related keywords as well. It's an easy way to get more traffic. The interesting thing is whenever you do a Google search and you type in the keyword, you'll notice that it bolds the keywords that you typed in when they're there on the page, such as how to or apple pie or make. And this allows you as a user to clearly see, hey, these pages have what you're discussing. That's the importance of keywords. So make sure that you're including the right keywords within your page and your title and your headings if you want to rank. If you don't, you won't do well. Last but not least, I wanted to go over social sharing. On Uber suggests, whenever you type in a keyword and then you go into the content ideas report on the left side, it'll show you all the popular blogs around the web that have a ton of social shares. You want to create content around things that are going to be popular. And what's cool about this report is it shows you what's already done well, because if something has done well, the chances are it'll continually do well in the future. If a lot of topics don't get a lot of social shares because you can keep going to the next page and the next page and the next page on the content ideas report within Uber Suggest, and I recommend that, you'll start seeing what's less popular. You want to avoid writing stuff that's not that popular and you want to write on more of the stuff that is really popular. What's also cool about this report too is it breaks down the estimated visits and backlinks. The holy grail is writing stuff that gets a ton of estimated visits, a lot of backlinks, and a lot of social shares. If you do that, you can do extremely well. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, I'm going to be going over off-page SEO. Thank you for watching.